I'm Alex Tracy. I'm the Director of Customer Success here at CrowdScout. Today, um, our webinar topic is Turning Supporters into Activists, a Guide to Grassroots Campaigning. So with that, let's get started. So one, you know, why grassroots advocacy? In the past, you know, if you needed to make a change, whether it was a local issue like zoning or a bigger change like how we educate children, it was hard to build a grassroots army from scratch. You had to go down to a state house or the hill or try to lobby someone directly or get a meeting with a member. You know, do you go to a fair and you know, hope someone wants to sign a petition? But those activation tactics have really changed. The proliferation of data and tools makes this so accessible and easy where we can now identify people quickly who agree with us, who want to support our cause, and we can also let lawmakers know that really fast. You know, so as we think about that, what does that really mean? It means advocacy folks have had to really shift the way that it's done. You know, for one thing, if you're not already building these digital grassroots campaigns, you're behind because your opponents are. So today, we'll talk about how this has changed and hear from leading folks in the industry who have seen the shift and change for themselves in the work that they do daily. So as most of you know, you know, CrowdScout recently rolled out Advocate, and we heard a lot, um, heard from a lot of you, and you've asked for a tool where you can connect directly with your lawmakers, and Advocate really helps you do that. It helps you mobilize grassroots advocacy efforts from small organizations to corporate lobbying groups trying to find voices on the ground. So I'm really excited to share some of the benefits that our customers are already seeing from doing this type of work. So benefit one, you know, lawmakers expect to hear from their constituents. 95% of lawmakers say that personalized messages is very important in understanding views of constituents. When congressional staff were asked what advocacy factors influence an undecided lawmaker, 92% said individualized email messages come from their constituents. This is a huge number, 95%. Lawmakers know organizations now have the ability to spin up these kinds of efforts online and they need to hear from you. You should know that your opponents are already doing this and lawmakers expect to hear from their constituents. So they really do expect to hear from you because of how easy it is to find people who support you, even when it feels hard to convince those decision makers, they still need to hear from you. You know, I chatted recently with a customer of ours and he shared his insight with me about how impactful, you know, this really is. So he says, you know, engaging grassroots activists on both large and small campaigns is the most important way to directly influence the legislative process. These actions have a variety of benefits. Most obviously that legislators listen to their constituents and a large number of messages for or against an issue can impact how they vote. But these efforts also help traditional lobbying by giving messengers the credibility to say, not only should you vote this way, here are the names of your constituents who agree with me. So that really goes back to the first point of, you know, 95% of lawmakers say they want to hear from you. And this really speaks exactly to that. Another benefit that we've seen, you know, supporters are more likely to give their information when they know they're contacting lawmakers directly. You know, really providing that opportunity, you know, you're really providing that opportunity for your supporters for that outlet. So giving them a way to really reach those lawmakers you know, is really important. Audiences surveyed are 44% more likely to give over name, address, email, if they feel like they're getting future personalized marketing engagement opportunities that are beneficial. You know, one of our customers, Singer Crawford, over at 50CAN um, is based in DC. 50CAN is an education advocacy group. And you know, although Singer is based in DC, she has boots in the ground in more than 15 cities and states and definitely knows how vital connecting, you know, constituents with, um, with legislators is to achieve that policy change. So she notes, people want to take action, but they don't always have the means to do so. Providing simple, intuitive mechanisms for reaching officials, whether by phone, email, or social media, gives them an easy way to amplify their voice or share their concern. The key is to meet them where they are, whether that's via email, text, or Facebook ad. So you really need to figure out, you know, 
who your supporters are and where they are. So whether you're reaching them on email or through an ad to Singer's Point, you know, getting them in a place where they learn more about your cause and knowing that they can contact lawmakers directly in so many different ways is why they'll join the fight. You know, they want to make an impact, but they also want to know by doing that, their lawmakers are hearing directly from them. Another benefit we've seen is really the intersection of activists and donors. And what I mean by that is, you know, it really wasn't long ago that you had two universes. You had the donor class and the class that was taking action. These two universes really made sense because you didn't have the ability to effectively raise money online. And nowadays it's easy to find donors and we're in the age of intersecting, you know, donors and activists. The overlap is really reflected, you know, in this first stat, 75% of those who volunteer are more likely to donate. So there's this great opportunity now for this overlap that we've been seeing. And in the age of digital, where advocacy organizations are able to provide fresh content for audiences easily, this kind of engagement allows you to become the trusted news source for your supporters on this issue, as well as their activism engine. So over time, you know, they'll keep coming back to the well, presuming you continue to cultivate that relationship. And this really, as you think about it, creates a nice feedback loop, right? So people who have done something for you are more likely to give money because they have skin in the game. They're more likely to engage with you in the future. So as you continue cultivating that relationship over time, that can only benefit the issues you're trying to push. Singer also shared this quote with us, um, using tools that build personal relationships with your supporters before sending them calls to action increases engagement and follow through significantly. And finally, give your supporters something in exchange for the work they put in. Send them a personalized thank you note, show their effort on a live map, or ask to share their story on social media. So as we think about how to do this and how to make sure we have a leg ahead, you really need those technologies and, and that kind of effort uh, to, to really back you up. So the fourth benefit um, that we've seen and our customers have shared with us, you know, grassroots campaigns can be agile and take advantage of current events to spin up movements quickly. So what does this really mean? It means that you have the ability to shift messaging depending on what's resonating in a flash. Having the ability to duplicate your efforts and having that flexibility to do so. So whether you need to spin up um, a last minute campaign when votes are being advanced, um, being able to segment based on desired versus undesired behaviors, being able to be reactive to what supporters are saying and adjusting your messaging based on their response. This really allows you to see what's happening in real time without too much of a lift. So, you know, as we've been talking about, if you're not doing this now, you're really behind in the game. And as, you know, technologies continue to emerge, it makes it even easier for you to spin up these campaigns, you know, see what messages are coming back from supporters or what's going on in current issues where you can adjust your messaging accordingly. So now that I've kind of laid out a couple of benefits of why grassroots engagement is so important, I'm excited to give you guys a spin around Advocate. Um, thank you to everyone who has uh, posted questions so far. Definitely keep them coming. Um, I'm joined here um, by Lucy Caldwell. She's CrowdScout's Chief, St Chief Strategy Officer. Um, so she's here with me and we're gonna walk through Advocate together and she's gonna gain some um, insight for, on how our customers use the product to advance their efforts. Thanks so much, Alex. Thanks for taking us for a spin around Advocate today. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get started. So Advocate, um, you know, whether you're rallying support around policy issues, looking to influence, you know, legislation in Congress or at the state level, or trying to raise awareness for a cause, you know, Advocate puts messages in front of decision makers that you want to target. So, you know, whether you're, you know, targeting folks through email or patch through calling or leveraging social media, you know, um, to reach influencers, you know, you have the ability to track your progress in real time as it all integrates seamlessly with CrowdScout's advocacy suite. So Advocate really helps grow your base and ensures key decision makers are hearing from supporters. So as you think about the data that you're collecting and you think about the stats you care about most, really having a place 
to go back to, to say, okay, how is my campaign performing, right? How many submissions do I have? How many people are coming to my page? And what does that conversion rate look like? So to be able to really track that in real time to see, you know, what my audience breakdown looks like, who we're contacting um, in real time is ever more important when trying to figure out if your messaging is right. Yeah, Alex, I think that's exactly right. You know, we've been around for almost four years now, and I'm so excited that we've finally rolled out Advocate. And I'm excited because we've really been evangelizing since we began this idea that you want all of your outreach action to be informing your action elsewhere. And bringing a suite of tools into the platform like Advocate, giving you the ability to outreach to lawmakers and decision makers alike on really important issues, I think is really key to informing your outreach efforts elsewhere, whether you're canvassing or doing phone calls or direct mail, but also looking at your other efforts to see see how they stack up compared to your direct advocacy outreach efforts. So for instance, you know, if a campaign is going well, can you sync that back to success your finance team is having online? Or if it's going not so great and you don't see that you're directing many calls in, can you see that, you know, elsewhere on one of your digital properties, different messaging is working better and, and tweaking that. So, you know, to us at CrowdScout, I think this is just the, the latest in, in being able to truly have that integrated approach in which all of your outreach efforts are informing each other. Right, and exactly. And so as you think about you know, what outreach methods are doing well versus others, you really need to have flexibility in the methods in which your supporters can contact their lawmakers, right? So as you think about the different activation methods, you know, the first is sending emails to decision makers. So being able to control, you know, what your supporters are saying and what language they're using. So you really have that control in exactly what, you know, folks are saying and customizing that form however you want. And what data points, you know, do you want to collect about those supporters? And also, how much flexibility do you want to give your supporters? Do you want them to, you know, leave a comment about their personal story? Do you want to really control that messaging? So that's really up to you about how you want to do that. Um, there are a couple of different other activation methods that, um, you know, Lucy touched on that we'll, we'll go through. So the second is, you know, patch through calling. So, you know, you both have the opportunity to, you know, email your lawmakers as well as call your lawmakers. So, you know, your supporters can um, plop in their phone number and directly get directly connected to their lawmakers. So, you know, giving them that flexibility to have different methods, um, depending on what they like, only gives them more of a reason to feel like they're really in the fight with you and that they're, you know, really reaching the, uh, the lawmakers that they want to contact. So the third um, activation method is leveraging social media, right? So as you think about what platform resonates most with your audience, to Lucy's point earlier, you know, really thinking about um, the data that you're collecting about your supporters, what platforms they're on, and, you know, how likely they are to use one of these methods. So maybe you choose email and tweets, or maybe you do all three, or maybe you just do one. So really giving your supporters that control. Yeah, I mean, I think that so much of that is dependent on what issue you're trying to move. Mm -hmm. You know, often, especially on smaller issues that are non-controversial, you know, for instance, if you're working on a regulatory issue that's relatively obscure, getting phone calls into a lawmaker's office or uh, sending tons of emails and dumping them into their inbox can be really effective. But in more controversial issues or issues that are getting more attention, using social media to influence them can really be powerful. We sort of, there's an old phrase in the biz of, you know, spank and thank. So sometimes you want to be able to show lawmakers, hey, if you do the right thing, we're really going to we're really going to praise you publicly. And if you do the wrong thing, we're going to put you on blast. So giving your audience that opportunity to pick how they reach them, I think is, is really critical. And as you alluded to earlier, it's all about creating a benefit for your audience. So the best outreach mechanisms are one where everybody wins. So you're winning because you're identifying new supporters and you're getting voices, real genuine voices, not just your spokesperson into the ears and eyes of lawmakers, but they're getting a benefit too because how often does the normal, a normal person who has a job and has kids and has commitments know how to uh, call their lawmaker's office right. or email a lawmaker? That takes a lot of activation energy. So, you know, this is a, Advocate's been a really awesome tool precisely because of, of creating that, that lower barrier to entry for regular, regular folks who want to have a say. Right. And for those who, those folks who want to have a say, they also need to know, you know, what they're advocating for. Right. So as you think about what your, those activation methods and you think about the issues that you're trying to push, you really need to create a space for your supporters to land on to really learn, you know, what is this issue? 
give me the information that I'm looking for and how can I, you know, reach my lawmaker, right? And so the ability to create landing pages with custom domains, being able to add your colors, um, you know, upload your logo and write a description of the issue that you're trying to push. So really, you know, allowing you to create this space, whether you're, you know, emailing, um, you know, this link to folks or you're, you know, spinning up a Facebook ad and you're trying to get people to click through to this landing page, really providing that information for them to say, okay, who is this organization? What are they trying to push? And, you know, how can I get involved? So really creating landing pages on the fly. So being able to duplicate landing pages, perhaps you have two issues going at one, two campaigns going at once, um, you know, being able to duplicate a landing page, swap out some language, and you know, blast another email out or you know, run another ad campaign. Having that flexibility is really important for our customers. Yeah, you know, this won't be the first time I've said this, but I always say that as a campaign and advocacy veteran myself, my only regret about joining CrowdScout four years ago is that I didn't get to use CrowdScout myself because it didn't exist. And advocate is just one more scenario where I feel that way a lot because I am so grateful to our product and engineering team for making this so easy to use. I remember when I was was running bills in various states or um, trying to raise issue awareness, the biggest problem is you don't know what's going to happen the next day when you wake up. So for instance, maybe you learn that a bill is going to be heard in committee or maybe on the floor the next day and you want to have a, an action center call to action scenario for your audience. But what do you do then? You have to, I mean, unless you're a super person who both does advocacy work and happens to be an expert graphic designer and coder, <laughs> you know, you don't have the ability to just quickly spin up a page. You have to go hire a web designer. You have to go find someone to make it look like it's styled in a way that's acceptable to your organization. And so we've really worked hard to make this easy to spin it up in moments. So you don't have to get an outside designer, get a, a coder to, to plop this in. It's, it's really um, pretty easy. And we've also even made it easy to decide who it is you want to target. Um, something that we heard from a lot when we were building this functionality is that yeah, lawmakers are super important and advocate, you know, comes pre-populated with a complete, uh, comprehensive, constantly updated directory of lawmakers in the states as well as federally. But if anyone, you know, anyone who reads the news knows that sometimes targets of these awareness campaigns are not just lawmakers, sometimes they're decision makers. So, you know, whether it's um, uh, contacting um, you know, a CEO or executive board of a Fortune 100 company to tell them where you want them to put their next factory or um, letting, uh, you know, another corporate interest know that, uh, you know, a vendor they're working with or a place where they're uh, thinking of building a site is good or bad. You know, a lot of times people want to influence people other than lawmakers. And so we've really made it easy to upload those custom audiences of folks who are influencers that that fall outside of that that spectrum so i think that's been pretty powerful for folks using this tool already yeah absolutely and being able to um you know kind of come back and find your new and passionate supporters right so as you think about you know how do i you know know if my messaging is working and how do i know that i'm activating new supporters while i'm still you know um accommodating um you know my my my, my current supported base, you know, you really need to have that place again to kind of go back to the theme of what we're talking about, you know, really having that place where you can find new and passionate supporters. So being able to track in real time, as Lucy was talking about, you know, as we break down those silos and we really figure out what touch points matter to people, making sure that we're activating those people in the avenues that they want. So, you know, one something that Singer said earlier that we talked about was making sure that you're really reaching people on the platforms that they're on. So, you know, by having all of this data and really having the centralized place where you can figure out you know, where are these people coming from and how do, how do I activate them and continue to activate them, you know, this is really the place where you, you can find those new supporters as well as continue to, you know, activate your, your other supporter base. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's exactly right. One of the funniest things that I think came up when we were building this were how many small sort of like almost housekeeping features customers wanted that they weren't finding in other tools. Yeah. Um, so like you were mentioning to me the other day, how much folks were clamoring for just the ability to folder their audiences as they build these campaigns. Right. And being able to organize them. And it was such a funny thing because it was such a small thing, but so impactful when you think about, you know, spinning up these new efforts into what Lucy was saying, you know, you overnight, you might need to spin up a new campaign. So to be able to really organize, you know, all of your campaigns and your efforts together, you know, only makes that easier for you each time you go in to figure out what your next move is.
great because, you know, you probably do want to go back to the well on some of these issues. Unfortunately, even when you win one battle today, there will probably be a similar one next day. So being able to organize your advocacy outreach efforts by campaign type, in foldering, whatever, it depends on how type A or not type A you or your <laughs> teammates are, but, but that, those have been really cool, cool features to see folks put into practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to kind of round us out here, um, Advocate is just one of the awesome um, products that we have. So we have a couple of other products. Um, one is Day Tripper, allows you to go door to door um, through your mobile uh, device um, or on the platform itself. Um, Quartermaster allows you to spin up campaigns quickly or accounts quickly, rather. Um, so, you know, if you're a national organization and you want to have, um, you know, if you're a national organization and you, you know, want to have each state have their own account and you want, you know, certain states to share data and some states not, you really have control of how the data flows up and down. Operator allows you to um, dial directly through the platform and, and call folks and your call for supporters, as well as, you know, create a script for volunteers if you want them to call through their phones and log that information right through CrowdScout. So Advocate is just our latest product um, that we're excited to integrate. And as we've kind of been talking about, as we've been explaining Advocate, really making sure that your data is all centralized in one place. So with these tools, it really helps you kind of keep that consistent to figure out where are my supporters, what activation methods um, you know, are most important, and how do I continue to engage those folks in that way. Awesome. Ready to take some questions? Yeah, let's do it. So I just looked over at some of the questions that you guys have sent in. Thank you so much for doing that. Alex, one of the questions that folks asked was, how are these interactions from our advocate tracked elsewhere in CrowdScout? Where can we see those interactions? Sure. So um, through the audience, we always say the audience tool is really the heart of CrowdScout. Um, the audience tool is where you go to figure out, okay, now that I, you know, have this uh, advocate effort going and I've, you know, gone door to door and I'm emailing folks, you know, what does that look like on someone's activity timeline? So through audience, you really have the um, ability to segment on those efforts. So if you want to know, you know, how many people have I reached in my campaign and who are those people, right? Sometimes a stat is really important, but you need to know who those people are. So through the audience tool in CrowdScout, you really have the ability to not only see, you know, folks that have um, come in and signed your, um, filled out that form, but also, you know, have they responded to my email and what does that look like? So the audience tool is a great way to kind of capture that and really know, you know, who those people are. Yeah, and I mean, that means that hypothetically, you can build audiences based on a range of interactions. So you could build an audience of folks who voted in two out of the last three elections who contacted a particular lawmaker and mm -hmm. took action on your website or were door knocked to. So really, I think the sky's the limit when it comes to, to building those custom audiences. Yeah, and what's great about that too is that they're dynamic, right? So as you think about how more supporters are coming in and how more folks fit that criteria, those audiences expand and contract automatically. So it really allows you at a, at, you know, a, a flip of a dime to take action on that audience. So at any time, you can go and take action on them. One of the other questions someone asked that is pretty advocate specific was, how many lawmakers and decision makers can I target with an individual campaign? So the sky is kind of the limit. Um, so as Lucy mentioned, you have the ability to both contact a lawmaker as well as a custom audience. So whether you want to do a mix of both, whether you want to do one or the other, you really have the ability to contact um, how many people you want. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you mentioned having multiple outreach me methods, and someone asked whether or not you can create campaigns and landing pages with multiple outreach methods, and the sky's the limit for that as well. You can give a visitor the ability to choose email, social, phone, so right. that gives you added flexibility. And it really gives you the flexibility, too, to then follow up and to, you know, share with your friends, right? So after you, you know, send an email um, out, you then have the ability to share that on Facebook or on Twitter. And so it really gives you that flexibility to sort of keep that interaction going and share with folks, you know, what am I, here's what I did. Why don't you, um, you know, take a look as well. So another question that's more industry specific, Alex, is that someone asked, how do you strike a balance between taking the time to test the efficacy of your campaign as you go along and also being responsive to changes? Yeah, so I think that, you know, Iterating too much is, is, could be a bad thing. And so, you know, taking the time to, to read the data, right? And so as you think about, you know, what does that data look like? You know, you don't need to read it every five minutes. Um, so being able to be reactionary to, you know, um, taking the time to test, but also, you know, not constantly iterating on the language, there's kind of a perfect balance there. So reading the data and, you know, looking at that dashboard that we were looking at earlier to figure out, you know, what that conversion rate looks like and what that view rate looks like. So I think, 
you know, having those tools available to you to figure out um, that perfect balance is exactly how you should do it. Yeah, I think I think certainly that ability to also look at past outreach mechanisms or even other types aside from just advocate outreach campaigns. So how did it work when you, how did people respond to forums or how did people respond mm -hmm. when you knocked their doors or called them on their phones? Being able to sync up those other outreach mechanisms with this kind of activation, I think is also, when you have everything in one place, it's, it's easier to kind of know what's going to work and what's not because you're not, you're not starting from scratch every, every time. Right. So, um, I think one other question was, um, what is the bare minimum of contact information for, uh, audience targets? In other words, lawmakers, decision makers that you need to be able to run these campaigns through CrowdScout? Yeah. So it kind of depends on what your, um, outreach method is. So, um, you know, we have a whole, um, article about how, you know, if you're, uh, if you're emailing folks, you have to have obviously, um, a certain amount of, uh, fields. And then if you're reaching a custom audience, you also need a certain amount of fields. So it kind of depends on what your outreach method looks like. Um, it's not a long list. It's a pretty short list. But if you think about it, you know, the required fields that your supporters are giving only can benefit you. So as you think about the different activation methods that you're going to take on those supporters, you want to be able to collect that information. So it really does benefit both of you. So your supporters don't feel like, you know, they're going through a long form with 20 questions or, and things to fill out. And then for your benefit, you're really getting that contact information for that follow-up that you need. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm, I'm looking at the timing. I know you have a hard stop at 2.30, so we can send people on their way. Um, but we'll keep looking at some of these questions and, and find ways to, to share more resources with folks on our blog, on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Um, but Alex, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of a, a mini education today on, on grassroots campaigns and, and so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you everyone for taking the time. And as we mentioned, we'll send this around afterwards. So thank you everybody. Thanks so much.